America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone to May 21st. Any questions, comments during this proceedings? Come up to the microphone, give us your name and address. Call the roll, please. Mayor Cedar? Here. Member Burns? Here. Foley? Kinsbottom? Here. Krebs? Here. Laporte? Here. McCartney? Here. Member Foley is absent, Your Honor. Move to excuse. Support. Motion made to support it. Excuse Member Foley. Questions? In favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Senate agenda number four, City Council minutes May 7, 212. Regular meeting, recommendation approved. So many. Or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We have a public hearing this evening, 2012 2013 annual budget and millage rate. Mr. Booth. Good evening. I have our assessor, Lynn Houston, here tonight. She's going to uh, start the uh, hearing with a uh, overview of our um, tax situation. Good evening. What I'm passing out is just a comparison of the taxable and assessed value since 2007 to current to show you what the differences have been per year. <coughs> we average on our residential property is about 69-70% of our overall value. The industrial is about 6 to 8%, commercial between 11 and 12%. And this is overall for the last five years. It runs about the same in the assessed value. But he just wanted me to give you an, just an overall to show you how things have been progressing. For the most part, we've been having decreases. Occasionally, the personal property will jump around depending on whether we have something new come in for the industrial park for personal property-wise. But you can see we've started out in 2007 with a taxable value of 246,000 or 246,000,000. $887,582 and we are now at $189,163,141. So it has gone down. An overall decrease since 2007 is 23.4%. Now having said that, our values might have gone down, but the amount of parcels are still there. We're still maintaining about 28 2,830 parcels. They haven't changed too much over the, the past five years. Um, what has increased, though, just so in general information, is the tax tribunals have increased dramatically since 2007. Um, we used to have maybe two or three a year. We're averaging about 15 to 20 a year now. So they have gone up dramatically. Um, one of the things Mike had asked me to tell you about was the uh, projected personal property tax revenue. Uh, that it has passed either the House or the Senate, the bill, that uh, anything under 40000 will not have to pay personal property tax. So I did a study. We have 301 uh, personal property parcels. And um, the amount under 40000 if it's held true for this year, would be 183 parcels. But that would only amount to about $18,000 that we would lose. We would still take in $334,800 about, where before it would have been, um, um, with the IFTs, about 353. So even though we're losing quite a few, if it passes under 40,000 of assessed value, we are not losing a lot out of our uh, total tax amount for personal property. And like I said, that has not passed yet. Say that again about the 40000 There's a bill in the state legislature that if personal property is under 40000 they won't have to pay any taxes. 
if the assessment comes in under 40,000. They're still tweaking and it hasn't passed fully and been signed into law yet. And you project the loss of revenue to us is only 18,000? Yes, it? it is. We have quite a few personal property statements that are under $1,000. What effect does it have on industrial then? Uh, it would only take into effect one parcel. The industrial personal property is, is quite large. I mean, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars to a million dollars of personal <coughs> property. So it wouldn't affect the industrial part right now, except for one parcel. Hmm. So if you hear that in the news, don't let it scare you. It's not. It's not the 300 and some thousand. It's not 300 and some thousand dollars. We, we um, take in 353,000 if you include the IFTs in the industrial park. We'd only lose around 18,000. There been any discussion on the, on the entire amount of personal property being waived or no? There, I haven't heard yet, Mike. Um, there was discussion that they <coughs> would exclude the utility personal property. Like I said, nothing's been signed yet. There's only one bill been passed and it hasn't been passed on the other side. So it could change. It could change. But what this means is we still have to have the expense of sending the statements out. We still have to calculate them so we know who would qualify for that. And you're saying that since 07, our taxable value has decreased 23.4%? Yes, it has. An overall, overall decrease, yes. If you look at the handout I provided at the door tonight, on page two, there's a historical uh, taxable value, which uh, it's funny you picked 2007. Like. That's what I did as well, the 23.4%. Mm -hmm. And for the general fund, what what's happened is the um, the tax revenue has decreased for, from uh, three million two hundred twenty three thousand, and then this year we're looking at two million four hundred ninety one thousand. So it's a very steep drop. So. Any other questions for Lynn? <coughs> All right, thank, thank you. you. Okay, moving on. The uh, general fund, I'd like to start out there. And again, this is kind of a recap of some of the meetings we've had to this point. Um, the revenue uh, change 2012-13 versus 11-12. We're projecting $18,900 decrease. And on the expense side, $219,000. $200 decrease. And the budget that you have in front of you is a balance, balanced budget. Um, <clears throat> just to talk about some of the major change, changes within the general fund. For revenues, property taxes, and, and by this I mean the property tax capture plus the penalties and interest and the tax admin fee. They're down $83,600 for the year. Uh, state shared revenue on is up 52,500. And what that is, is uh, last year's budget, the EVIP, the, the part that we, we had to do certain things to qualify for, um, we did not budget in last year because at the time of the budget, we didn't know what they were doing with it. So we, we left it out. So um, we will get that as well this year. On the expense side within the general fund, uh, just going through highlighting some of the uh, largest decreases, um, the superintendent, Department is down 77,900. Uh, the police budget down 24,900. Public works down 32,800. Fringe benefits down 66,000. City general, which is kind of, kind of the catch-all, and it's where we uh, we capture our insurance and things like that. It's down 25,500. And then the operating transfers would be up 50,400. <clears throat> Just a few comments on the general fund, the, um, on the, ex the expense side. Uh, savings for the current year were attained by combination of the city accountant and superintendent positions, elimination of a position in the parks department. The park staff now reports to the uh, recreation director, and then the elimination of the director of public services and engineering position. <coughs>
Moving on to uh, other funds, uh, I'd like to uh, start by talking about major and local streets. The budget that we have um, put together includes $72,500, uh, which would be available for street repairs. Again, that's for um, major and local streets. This is an increase of $10,000 over the current year's budget. Obviously not a large increase, but some. Um, recreation. The transfer in subsidy from the general fund was reduced by $30,000. Current year it was $99,900, so the proposed budget will decrease to $69,900. The DDA tax revenue has decreased from the current year budget of $85,600 to the current year's projected $40,800. The golf course, I'm in the process of updating the uh, golf course deficit elimination plan. The updated plan is due in June of, of this year. It requires a balanced budget in 2013. The deficit again, and I've thrown this number around a few times, deficit at uh, September 30 of 11 was $213,500. <clears throat> the water fund budget as presented should generate positive cash flow of about $100,000. Uh, the plan currently is to review the 11-12 results in September of this year. And at that point, I would rec make a recommendation to council for a plan to, to adjust rates at that time. I'm not putting it through now. The intent would be to hold it without changing the rates. Um, rubbish fund has a cash balance of $126,000. Again, that was as of September 30 of 11. And the plan is to provide residents with a credit during the fiscal year 12-13. And those, those are some of the comments I have. I don't, I don't know if there's questions, uh, either by council or public tonight, on certain items that have been changed. I got a question. <coughs> you said elimination was Director of Public Service and Engineering. Yes. How is that organization possible? How is the organization possible? You mean without that position? Yes. Um, we treat it like we do the wastewater facility and have a, uh, a lead operator or lead a lead for that department and then personnel decisions would be um, handled by me how do you address the competency issues then <coughs> as far as well as a director do you, you don't have anybody in at that point as a director with the engineering technical competencies the engineering services, um, St. Clair County Road Commission has an engineering department. So any, any questions on engineering, I could pull them in or utilize AEW. Um, that's how I would handle that. And the day-to-day -day over oversight? Of would be handled by the lead. Has that lead? demonstrated that, that kind of competency though? Or is this going to be a training, a job training situation? I haven't selected a person. I, I believe we'd have to post the position and interview for, for who that might be. Anybody else on council or in the audience? Uh, I have a quick one for Dan. <clears throat> Seeing half your revenue is gone, and you get everything covered that we're doing now. Sorry. Seeing that you're losing half your revenue coming up for this next next term, this next year, are you going to be all right for for the projects and funding that you have planned? No. No. So that means there won't be much going on. Anybody else? Audience? Do we need to? You talked about the maintenance guy. Who's going to go the, to the um, Scott's meetings on monthly, which is where the county allocates the federal funds for local roads? That was handled pr pr uh, prior to Mr. Harrington being here by uh, AEW. It'll be a combination of that and myself. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to tell you because I sit on the overview committee, and uh, that's not a very effective way of doing it. It, much, it works much better, quite frankly, if uh, 
when Scott first arrived here, he got more money from the city from Scott because he attended. Once his attendance uh, started, he started missing meetings, mm -hmm. St. Clair quit getting funds. It takes a person from the city and from our administration to attend those meetings to hire a person. I don't think you're going to get that type of representation. I will also comment is um, when it comes to SimCog. SimCog is the clearinghouse to review federal and state funds. I know that, that Scott attended those occasionally, but an elected official is the only person who has the ability to vote at those meetings. And that is where you find out where funds are, and that's where you do the politic and you get funds to the community. Um, is there someone from the council going to start attending some cock meetings? And the same with the Michigan uh, Municipal League. That's where you find out where the grants are coming from. I mean, the needs of this community are greater than what the revenue that we're going to generate. We need to go and get funding from both the state and uh, federal government. And I haven't heard anything here on how we're going to have representation there and how we're going to go out and try to find those fundings to come here. I really don't think it's all, quite frankly, Mike's problem. I think it's the council has got to start picking in and start uh, attending these meetings, and somebody's got to be there on a regular basis so they became a known entity at these, at these organizations. SimCog is really important because there are seven counties that belong to SimCog, and every year a different county member it becomes president of the organization. I think it was about four years ago that somebody from St. Clair was president of SimCog in another three years or so, there'd be another representation. If you wanted to, I mean, I hate saying it, but if you want to get funding to come to your community, you got to get into the administration of that organization. It's time right now for somebody from here to do it. We need funding to satisfy our needs. If, if you will get with me at the end of this meeting, give me contacts on those, we will have someone from council on each one of those. Okay. You know, I, I want to elaborate too on that. The uh, floating dock project got into a uh, impasse with the uh, DNRE, and it took uh, Mike and Scott's presence up there in Lansing to break that. That project probably would still be on the drawing boards if that hadn't happened. And I think that uh, was a combination of uh, having Scott cultivated that rapport up there, and Mike, in his professional capacity as an engineer, uh, presenting our case. So those are those are the things that you lose. It's I understand budgets are like that. You give up things, but I, I want everybody to understand there's some significant uh, reductions effects that we'll, we'll be suffering. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Lockwood. Anybody else? <clears throat> Do we need to close the public hearing? Now? So move. Support. Motion being supported to close the public hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Quote number six, ordinance resolution, notice of intent resolution to issue general obligation limited tax bonds for SRF loan program. Mr. Harrington. Is that you? I'm going to take that oh, one, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Um, as you know, the city uh, last February was notified that our application for the sewer rehabilitation funds submitted to the state under the SRF program to complete critical structural repairs to the city's sewer system was uh, would be funded for the fourth quarter of 2012. The preliminary uh, cost estimate for this project was $2 million. As identified um, last week, Mike Booth and I met with our bond council financial advisors and um, Steve Pangori from AEW and to uh, prepare a schedule of events and a timetable for the financing related to the uh, project. The notice of intent resolution that is before you is the first step in that process. It's, um, it's required that we publish a notice in the newspaper adver advertising our intent to um, issue the bonds mm -hmm. and notifying the residents of the, um, that that's going to occur. Um, and also giving them the opportunity to um, be notified of the availability of a referendum. Um, so in order to move forward with this project, it's recommended that the resolution um, be adopted so that we can proceed. So moved. I'll support. All right, the motion is made and supported. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question, Janice. On the map that was provided? Yes. There okay. was also a map included um, 
not so much as a as a um, attachment to the resolution, right, right. But just to give you a general overview of of those areas that are going to be affected by repairs. Okay, which ones are the ones that are going to the red circles, the red lines? All of the above. All of it. Wow. Okay. The <clears throat> legend is quite legible. I mean, you got it any smaller. <laughs> Yeah, so we had to downsize. There are there are uh, three different categories of repairs. I think that the engineer had explained to you. Um, some of it involves lining. Some of it involves an open cut, and then pipe I know burst. pipe bursting. Burst. I'm not so familiar with the technicality. Um, and then the. The map has been drawn to identify those areas that would be affected by the different types of improvements. So by this bond, uh, this is like a matching fund situation, is that what's driving us? We had, uh, we'd received S2, or an S2 grant, received funds for it, and this is the repairs that we're doing as a result of that. It's a grant and a loan program. How much of, what's the percentage between what we have to pay back and what's a grant? This loan will be paid back in full. The grant was, was it six hundred and six hundred and some thousand dollars. So it's two million. And based upon doing that, you needed to do this. Right. And if we don't take advantage of it, we have to pay the money back, right? No, we're Damn. past we're past that point. I mean, yes, we have to. We it started back in I want to say two thousand four or five seven eight nine. Um, with some televising yep. and then at that point some of those repairs um, based on the televising were identified and an application was submitted um, part of the criteria for getting the money for the televising was that we did submit an application for the improvements and the critical improvements that were identified were uh, totaled 1.8 million dollars um, it's a I'm sorry Three point two million. Yes. Okay. So, is is this in the budget the interest repayment? It's part of the rate study that they they've done, and he's basically just finalized that. So uh, there'd be a rate adjustment to sewer. Again, we're trying to do the same thing with that. It, the uh, wastewater fund is producing cash flow. We're going to try not to increase rates. At this point, we we don't believe we'll have to. Over how many years is this fund? Twenty. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying over twenty years we won't adjust the rates, but at least initially. And and what is the length of the construction project? Is it over a year or two years or do you know? Mike, do you know that? Know year. That. I'd say a year. How, a how long, Mike, is it? For the... Please. Sure, go ahead. You looked at the size of, of the three uh, you have there as far as lining, open cut, and pipe bursting. They're going to do it in a three-phase process, and it'll be over a year. They'll do each segment as they're going, is the way I understand it. So one year from the time they break ground until we'll be back in... Which is, I think, anticipated in this fall or winter? The, if everything moved forward, the uh, anticipate that the bonds would be... Um, well, the, the project would be bid um, in July. The contract award would be your second meeting in July, and then the bonds would be closed in September. So probably not until next instructions. I don't. No, I think they're going to start some of them. What we'll start right away? Any other questions? Motion's been made. Yes, sir. <coughs> What's the township percentage of this cost? They're user of the system, correct? What's their what percentage of the? Yeah, they use the system, don't they? 
they're charged based on the calculation of the fixed assets as a total and, and depending on how they use it. So Are you going to help pay for these repairs? There would be some. Yes. Anybody else? Call the roll, please. Uh, Member Kinswater? Yes. Crabs? Yes. Laporte? Yes. McCartney? Yes. Burns? Yes. And Mayor Cedar? Yes. Mayor Jerome? Thank you. All right, we will go to number seven, reports administration. Mr. Booth, do you have anything tonight? Nothing tonight. Mr. Downey? No, Your Honor. Any departments, authorities, boards, commissions, committees, council reps? I'd just like to uh, commend uh, uh, a venture between uh, some of our local uh, owner entrepreneurs. Um, the cemetery has been looking around to recognize the uh, veterans uh, short of the uh, current method of uh, putting a flag. Uh, some of the uh, veterans have medallions, but that's uh, gotten um, uh, cost prohibitive, I guess is the honest way of saying it. Uh, we had um, a group of, uh, like I say, local professionals that got together and uh, designed um, and built a uh, what I think is a pretty uh, nice example of that kind of cooperation. Uh, we're currently putting them into the uh, cemetery lots of the uh, veterans uh, that uh, do not currently have the American Legion medallions. Uh, last uh, week we started, I think we got about 50 of them out there now. And over the next uh, couple years, we'll probably be able to uh, equip uh, all the veterans that don't currently have medallions with this. The uh, companies that were involved in this, uh, uh, Bob Lozon from Precision Dye Machine here in St. Clair, Gary Leduc from St. Clair Township and Dual Plastics, and Conformance Coatings, Bruce Douglas uh, in Marysville, all uh, got together uh, along with uh, my company. Uh, and we, um, we have this available now for Memorial Day. and. Uh, in future years so I think uh, we'll, we'll be uh, probably getting the um, uh, cemetery commission to, to recognize them more formally but I'd like to say it was a job well done and uh, happy to say that uh, we're starting to see the benefits of it. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Burns. Anybody else on the reps? No one finished business. Number nine new business A approved pay estimate number one north wall riprap and floating docks project. Who has this one? Just wanted to uh, provide an update on the project itself. The project is on, I guess, on schedule, ahead of schedule. They're um, looking for completion uh, later this week. And this is just the first pay, um, pay estimate that's due. Any questions on that? <coughs> Are we talking about the amendments to that too, though? I think we have to do that. Do that. That'll be next. Ask those mm -hmm. questions then. All right. I'd move to approve payment. Support. All right. Motion been made. Support to approve the payment for North Wall riprap questions. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. We'll go to B. Approved change order for North Wall riprap and floating docks project. Okay. The contract price was adjusted down eight thousand six hundred fifty-five dollars and fifty cents. And then the second page highlights some of the items that um, that were adjusted. And if I could ask Mr. Harrington to uh, provide an update on those items. Mike? The uh, changes to the floating dock, if I could ask you to provide an update as to what the changes were. I know the uh, structure timber boardwalk, there was a, an increase of $3,432. Uh, fishing pier composite decking, a uh, decrease of 12500 and then there was one tree removed for $412.50. Let me see what you got. Yeah, we modified the tiles. There certainly was a great deal of discussion during the... Uh, the bidding process as to the piles that were uh, proposed for the job, it was one of those things where that was what the uh, DNR was going to accept. That's what we had to do to try and get through. Um, our contractor then made a, a proposal, which we then sent back, we being uh, Roe, 
uh, engineers uh, and myself reviewed that. Also the uh, way that the floating docks would also be uh, handled. So one was the trusses to the fishing pier, the other was the, uh, the way the floating docks would be held in place. Um, those were approved and also uh, then we had to, of course, take a tree out that was in the way of the, uh, the boardwalk. So we uh, ended up with a net savings of $8,000. Thank you. Motion to approve the change order. Support. All right, motion been made and approved to approve the change order. Questions, anybody? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, number 10 is claims and accounts, claims and accounts May 10 and 17. I, I have a question just in general. Uh, where we have uh, businesses within the, the uh, city limits that are at best only sharing in the business of the city, is there anything we can do? I mean, we've talked about this in the past, but I just see that a disproportionate amount of business going outside the um, city limits. Even even when it is dis, uh, shared, it's still dis, disproportionate going to uh, businesses that aren't paying city property tax. I don't understand that. And there's at least three examples I can show you in this current one where that's that's happening. What can we do to change that situation? Which businesses are you referring to? Well, um, hardware supplies. Hardware supplies, we have a policy and we put through about, what, two months ago that if you owe back taxes or if you don't conform with any uh, uh, city uh, ruling or entity, we, we stop doing business here to you. Co but we're still doing business with them? No, very little. No, well, we're still doing business with them. Uh, the, the, two, the two items on there that you're referring to were purchased prior to the uh, letter being generated, like mm -hmm. a day or two before. Oh, okay, well, it was in April. Yes. Are we doing anything to get this situation resolved? Well, I guess the question would be, do we send out a second notice or a third notice on business license and, and that type of thing, Janice? Or no? Do we do that? Yeah. Or, yes. So that, it, to get their business license, they would have to be current on their taxes. So, yes. There was some issue to blight. Was that taken care of, Mr. Downey? I'm not aware of where that stands right now, Mr. Laporte. D can speak to that. D. Well, D's got his hand up. <coughs> In answer to your your little deal, Tim, um, the business I would presume you're talking about Wise Hardware, correct? I'm just guessing that he probably cost the city of St. Clair ten thousand dollars for his non-conforming stuff. And until his mother really got pushed to go to court, nothing ever happened. Okay? You try and help, you try and help, pretty soon it gets bad again. I'm sorry, but that's one vendor, if I had my way, would be, get crossed off the list permanently. So, I mean, I don't know whether or not what you're trying to say, um, it's, it, it would be good for us to buy local, but he doesn't conform half the time he doesn't pay the taxes blah 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 he wouldn't even let me in the building to inspect twice so I'm sorry uh, you know we've got to we've got to go to vendors that that will treat the city of St. Clair right and, and not think they I mean we still have an issue with his sign so I, I mean I'm sorry but you're the only one that really doesn't support what what the council has already agreed on you understand what I'm saying? I mean, you're you're getting something from him, and we're the one out in the field having to fight this all the time, tooth and nails, and it's it's not fun. Thank you, Mr. Boyer. Do you have another another business? It's probably printing, right? Uh, printing, uh, some of the printing. automotive repair. Uh, there's there's others in there. Printing printing is done. Well, Mike can help with that. A lot of it's done by department. Trees is here. Trees, yeah, that's one that goes outside. Where is she? Trees. <laughs> He's questioning printing. Why would you normally, or why would you not have printing done it with someone in in town versus out of town? My guess is because they don't, they they either don't have the capacity or 
there must be some reason. Or is there somebody in town that could pr provide the printing that you need? I don't know if there's this one. Well, I, I've asked her a number of times, and I, the only the thing that when I've asked you is, did you bid it? And it's always yes. So I don't think there's anybody within the city limit that does actual printing itself. I can't think of anybody. Mr. Lockwood, do you know anybody that does printing in town? There are people who sell printing services because no one, as far as I know, has a printer in town. Yeah. All right, anything else on claims and accounts? If, if not, Your Honor, I make a motion to approve as presented. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Let's go to number 11, public comment. Any public comments tonight? Questions? Concerns? North Riverside. Uh, before I begin uh, talking about what I plan on talking about tonight, can I give you some advice? I've only been to a couple meetings, <clears throat> but I've seen something recurring during this during this time that uh, I thought I might be able to give you some insight in. I was an executive at an international corporation before I became the uh, complaining water complainer guy here in St. Clair. <coughs> and we, we grew the company from a small company to a, a, a medium-sized company. And so we learned, went through a lot of gyrations, learned a lot of things, made a lot of mistakes. And uh, one of the things that we learned uh, really quickly is you can't have financial conversations, okay, without an overhead projector, okay, without people being able to see, interact with you. Um, if you're presenting figures, nothing gets people lost more in the crowd faster than figures, you know. So I've, I've already heard at least maybe three comments in the last three meetings related to that issue, is that uh, if, if the council or even somebody like me, it's already intimidating enough for an average citizen to come up here and stand in front of you, uh, but if I have something that I want to share, uh, I have to give copies, and each one of you has a copy. Now, somebody sitting out here in the audience, they don't know what the heck I just gave you, so they can't follow along. It's impossible. So my, my request is at a minimum there should be a, a, um, a small amount of AV, you know, put into the room so at least a, a, a citizen could come here and put, put a document on an overhead or something. Something really simple. Thank hopefully, you. hopefully that's not stupid. You know. Oh, thank you. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> <coughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> back to the issue at hand. I had to read in the Village Voice last week that uh, the city's position um, is that the sample of contaminated water that I sent in for independent testing in 2010 was suspect because I had delayed in submitting it to the testing company. Uh, considering this development, I feel compelled to kind of fill in a few of the blanks for everybody so that the, we, everybody sees the whole picture. <coughs> As Paul Harvey said, the rest of the story. Uh, as I mentioned before, I delivered my first sample of contaminated water to the water, city, city Water Department on December 8, 2009. That date was very memorable to me because the next day, December 9, 2009, I had the first of my two hip replacements. Uh, the d disease that I contracted in 2009 somehow ate the membrane between my joints and, and so I was, when I met the guys in the City Department the first time, or the Water Department, I was bone on bone. So. I wasn't a very pleasant guy, I'm sure, but uh, it, was, it was what it was. Uh, the second hip replacement that I had to have done was done June 2010. So I tell you this so that you can see that when all this activity of 2010, April 2010 was happening, you know, I was in no shape to be getting in a car and driving to Ypsilanti. I could barely walk, so, I, so everybody understands that. As the Village Voice article briefly mentioned, on April 22nd, I collected a, another contaminated sample of water. Mr. Eisen of the City Water Department had previously given me set, uh, sample collection bottles that are approved for uh, uh, their collection. It's scientifically approved, I guess. Some fantastic plastic bottle. That uh, everything has to be collected in these little plastic bottles, otherwise it's not valid. <coughs> As the article stated, I gave Mr. Eisen a portion of the contaminated water sample, and he promised to send it out for testing. Now, this is the gentleman who, in the city of St. Clair was responsible for delivering us clean water. 
The truth is, I never intended on taking my, sample, my portion of that sample for testing. I was in no condition to do that. I was confident, though, that once I had given the sample that was indicative of the problems that we were experiencing to the person responsible for delivering the clean water, that all the right things would happen. Unfortunately, they didn't. But if they had, we would all have known the truth a long time ago about what's going on. Much to my surprise, though, he definitely didn't do what he promised. He merely took the samples back to his office and ran the test looking for particular bacteria, which they do in-house in the water department. Uh, now, please note, the actual report that he returned to me clearly stated that there was rust in the sample. Now the test that I sent out to national testing laboratories that was kind of, is kind of being summarily dismissed because of the timing of it all, um, was the actually same exact sample that that test right there was con uh, conducted from. He was given half of the sample, or a portion of the sample, filled it, and, and he took it, and that's what he chose to do with it. Now, the important point on the bottom right hand side of the report that he chose to do, he actually noted there is rust in the sample. Yet, he chose to only test it for bacteria. Something's wrong with this picture. Why would the person responsible for our drinking water be handed a sample of, of that severity and go back and not test it for metals? When you clearly saw yourself by your own eye, there's rust in the sample. So there's metals. One of the things I've learned along this saga here that I didn't want to learn about, but I had to learn anyhow, is that independent testing laboratories that are, that are government certified, like National Testing Laboratories is, they require a 500 milliliter sample minimum of water before they can do any metals testing at all, period. That's the standard. Well, the city only, as you saw, they collect these little bottles like this. So according to the experts that I've talked to, there's no physical way that they can have enough sample in the samples that they collect to do metals testing. All that sample is adequate for is bacteriological testing. Mm. 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 But that's what this says, special bacteria yes, exactly. testing. Exactly. Right? And that's all he tested. He told me he was going to test it out, send it out for extensive testing. And that meant comprehensive testing, metals, everything. You want to know what's in the water that's brown. He chose not to do that. <coughs> Another kicker <laughs> to this whole saga is that at the same time in April, that same time frame, the city, city water staff was in my kitchen. Mr. Harrington had promised weeks earlier, because this has obviously been ongoing, that they were going to flush and they're trying to find, and he did exactly that. And during this whole week that this was all going on, there were two members of the water department sitting in, standing in my kitchen. My sink had been running for 20 minutes, 20 minutes. And all of a sudden, pff, brown water started coming out of my faucet. They were shocked. I was shocked. It happened right in front of them. Finally, it's not just my word against somebody else's word. They actually saw it with their own eyes. Nobody has to believe me anymore, right? Now the experts saw it. Well, what you saw right there is the experts' response to seeing brown water coming out of my faucet. They chose, made a conscious choice not to test it. So my point is, they have no problem trying to discredit the test that I had done in the media. But I don't see anywhere where Mr. Eisen's actions are questioned. So who has more of a responsibility to the citizens? A citizen who sees a problem and tries to alert you about the problem, or the man whose job it is to guarantee the delivery of the water, water supply to you? One thing I don't understand is I've come before you twice now. I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. But if that's the primary argument that the city's had, to deflect, deflate or deflect my contentions, why didn't somebody mention that? Why didn't somebody ask me this question in the last two times I've stood in front of you? Ask me the question. I would have told you this before, and you, we could already have been three steps farther than we are right now. But for some reason, the only person that, they, they, this, that anybody tells us to is, is, is the reporter. They don't, tell, they don't ask me the question. I could have clear, clarified everything for you even before the story ever ran in the newspaper, but nobody did that. So 
it gets out in the media that you know, this is the issue. Well, that's not the issue, guys. I am not the city's water quality expert. The only reason we're even standing here today even know that this is an issue is because I haven't stopped complaining about it. As you see by your experts, the document in front of you, if your experts had their way, I would just go away. That's scary to me, okay? Clean water is something that we all count on. Our families, our kids, our pets, we all count on this stuff. I don't get alarmed about stupid things. I'm not like that. But when I turn on the faucet and it's brown, and I, an expert stands next to me and says, that water is brown, and then everybody says, well, Larry, you're the only person that's complaining about this issue. Well, does that make it okay too? Because <laughs> I'm the only person complaining about the issue? No, it's not okay. They should be pulling out all the stops, figure out what the problem is, and educate the people and tell us what the heck is going on. But to this day, now it's been, again, two weeks since the last time I talked to you, and we've done all of our communication through the media. I don't think that's fair. So I wanted to say my piece. I told you the rest of the story now that it's not just my responsibility to get in the car and my handicap but get to Ypsilanti to test the water when I handed it to the experts and they chose not to do that. That's where the criticism should be. It shouldn't be at me and my testing methodology or how long I hang on to a sample. It should be what did your experts do with the same exact sample? A lot less than I did. Questions? I'll feel. Is your water still coming out? Somebody shoot is me your down. water still come out rusty? It's not an everyday thing. It's an intermittent thing. It happens whenever it happens. It happens when somebody in the township flushes the hydrant. It happens when somebody on the other side of town has a fire at their house and the fire engine hook up to the hook up to the to the hydrant. I don't know. All I know is after years now of seeing this happen and all this information, the last time was a great example, April third. Instantly, seconds after the water came out of my faucet, I was on the phone with Mr. Ice and told him. It's coming out of my faucet brown again. This is now three years we've been having the same conversation. And he said, Larry, nothing's happening in the city today. We're not doing any flushing. We don't have any issues. There are no problems. And he says, but the people from the township told me that they were going to be flushing the hydrants in the township. And I was like, whoa. Like, you know, I thought it was bad already. But now if somebody on the north end of the township can flush a hydrant or uh, have a house fire and our water turns brown, Where's the cause and effect here? What, where is the contamination coming from? Do your neighbors have the same problem? Yes. Everybody had. Let's back up. Last year, I, when I approached Mr. Atkins about this, and again, we keep going back to these same questions all over. It's not my house. It's they, last year, they did a test after my prodding them. They did a test. And they, Mr. Rice and Mr. Harrington can tell you all about the tests they did. They went to a number of houses. They did pre and post tests. They flushed some hydrants. Bam! The water did turn brown. It happened. They proved it. The only thing is that the level of contamination in the sample that they got on that day <laughs> wasn't nothing like the level that we've been experiencing, but it was enough to prove that it was happening. The water went from clear to brown. It wasn't nearly as brown as it has been. But it was bound. It, there was literally a cause and effect. It was clear as day. They proved it already. Yeah, at your house? Multiple houses along Riverside. Ask the, please ask the water gentleman to give you the facts. But they've talked to the people to the north and the south of you, and they have the rust problem just like you do? Again, they told me that they had seen the problem at multiple houses. It's not me. It's not, I'm not crazy. It's not my pipes. You know, my pipes aren't 20 minutes long. It takes a lot longer than, you know, a lot shorter amount of time to clear your pipes out than 20 minutes. The stuff is not originating in me. I'm not the issue. My real estate ain't the issue. It, they have verified that over and over again. And again, it keeps coming back to, well, Mary's the only one complaining, or maybe it's just his house. No, guys, we've already been through all this stuff. It's not my house. There is a systemic issue, and they briefly discussed it in the article that he wrote, you know, does, as we talked about before, the upgrade in the pipeline. It's clear as day what's going on, guys. Clear as day. I'm sorry, but I mean to be offensive. Are you still, using, the, the, are you still using the water at your house? I'm sorry? Do you still use the water at your house? Yeah, yeah really stupid, ain't I? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I do. No, that. Actually, just... my wife did that yesterday, the other day. She said, Larry, why are you making coffee with that water? I said, because I'm an idiot. I, you know, I just didn't think about it. Again, it's reflex. You know, you use your water? Yeah, I use my water. You know, do you shower in the water? April 3rd, when this whole thing came down the last time, my wife was getting into the shower. When I turned the faucet on, saw the water brown. And I said, whoa, honey, whoa, don't get in the shower. You know, if my wife would have showered in brown water and you guys would have had her down here, <laughs> that wouldn't have been a good situation, okay? All but right. Thank you, Larry. Mr. Booth, do you want to okay. kind of let people know what direction we're taking and what's going to happen at the next meeting? 
Mr. Eisen will be here with uh, data to showing what tests that they do, explain the tests that they do, and give us an update. Excuse me, at one that more point. Thing, quick thing, could I add to that, please? Because I know what the results are going to—they're going to bring you. I've seen them test the water. They run the water in your house until it's not dirty anymore. Then they take the test, and then they send it out, and they say everything is wonderful. So let me ask you a question. Just please query them for me. I have now officially complained. 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2012, clearly documented. Everybody here has seen proof that I have complained four straight years in a row, right? I'd like to know, anywhere in the water department system have those complaints been registered and documented? Just a question for your experts. You should ask them that one. So Mr. Eisen will be here, and he's collecting that five-year data from the independent tests that are done quarterly, too. Yes. Yes. We'll have that all next meeting. Next meeting. All right. Anybody else with questions or comments about that whole situation? Okay, hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll have some answers for you, for everybody. Well, not hopefully, we're going to have some answers. All right, any, any other uh, public comment, questions? All right, then we will go to number 12, announcements, Mayor, Council members. I do have a couple quick things. American Cancer Society, the Bark for Life, June 2nd, 2012, 10 a.m., East China Township Park. Uh, 10 a.m. June 2nd, East China Township Park, American Cancer Society, Bark for Life, a canine event to fight cancer. And then also Memorial Day Parade starts at 1 o'clock, goes down to in front of Palmer Park Manor. There will be a ceremonial down there. Um, can't think of anything else? <coughs> when you get the list of, um, of committees that Mr. Lockwood was referring to earlier, please, I would be more than happy to volunteer my time on some of those. Thank you. Mr. Kinsfire would probably want to jump in on one. Sure. Certainly. Okay. Mr. Laporte. Sure. Okay. You guys did that to me when that union thing was going on. <clears throat> Anything else from Mayor Council? Motion to adjourn. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Have a good night, everyone. Thanks for coming down. Thanks for your patience. <laughs>